Rosalie Bastianich, the heir of my not so berry challenge, and her fiancé, Finley Broke, took the train from Brightchester into the city of San Michuno, heading into the Spice District, and finally, to their destination, Laventura Restaurant and Bar. Despite being Love Day, it was pretty empty, guaranteeing the two lovebirds the table of their choice. Rosalie was really impressed with the restaurant Finley Pick. Seems like he was getting the hang of handling a woman with expensive, snobby taste, and Finley was impressed with that dress Rosalie had on, calling her sexy, telling her he can't wait to go back to her dorm later. Oh Finley, you naughty boy. They were quick to place their orders from the limited menu. Rosalie picking the Wagyu steak with a dirty martini, the three blue cheese olives, and Finley picking the filet with a glass of Cabernet. Well, look at the two of them. Rosalie got flashbacks from her childhood as she talked with Finley, how they started off as children, Finley living in that tiny mobile home, talking shit to each other about their families, being here with him in a brand new city, away from home on their own for the first time, and getting their degrees, truly made her feel all grown up. She was a woman, and he was a man, and she was just so excited for their future together, to keep growing up with one another. They mainly talked about their first day of classes, how Rosalie gave an offering of academic success to the Brightchester statue, how Finley's campus has a huge yoga studio, or how riveting Rosalie's politics of leadership class was, how they explored their campuses, the layout of their dorms, the few friends they made, which made Rosalie remember her new friend, Kimberly Petty, perhaps the two of them can meet sometime. Finley said he'd love that. Any friend of hers is a friend of his. Though, as excited as she was for this next phase of her life, she was feeling a tad bit homesick. She missed her mother Gwyneth a lot, and Tanisha and Speckles. She didn't even get a chance to say bye to Bella. She felt like something was off with their relationship. Perhaps the time apart will do them good, and when she goes back home after this term, they can work on things. Finley thought that was a good idea. Bella will be fine. Fine. They've got a life to create. They finished their dinner soon after. Lots of college talk and flirting in between bites. And Rosalie wasn't in the mood to go back to the dorms just yet. Since they came all this way, maybe they should check out the nightlife. And though Finley discussed pretty much every single topic they could think about over dinner, the one thing that still wasn't brought up was their future wedding, unbeknownst to Rosalie. That was about to change. The two headed down to the fashion district, stopping outside a packed nightclub. They headed inside to the club and straight to the bar. Rosalie apologized to her mother Gwyneth in her head. Sorry mum. She definitely wasn't going easy on the drinking, like she promised. Finley ordered them both spicy martinis. Rosalie loved when he would order for her. He knew exactly what her tastes were. She was always so impressed with how well he understood her. It's like he had an encyclopedia all about her hidden away somewhere. And here she was, secretly freaking out about their future marriage. It made her feel so pathetic at times. Here he was, the most sensational man she's ever known who always went above and beyond for her. How could she doubt their engagement? How could she not be ready? They may be young, but even at Rosalie's age, she knew the chances of her finding another man like Finley were slim to none. Would getting married young really be a tragedy? But enough with the melancholy. They were here to dance before hitting the dance floor. Finley really had to pee. So they headed to the downstairs bathrooms first. He had some trouble getting down the stairs. They both freshened up a bit, Rosalie getting in Finley's face and playfully teasing him that she can't believe he's not insecure about what she wears, that he lets her leave the house wearing stuff like this. He knows how guys, and apparently girls, like to hit on her. What happened to his protectiveness? Oh, he was still very protective over her, he whispered, but she's all his, and he knows the outfits are for him. In fact, it was getting difficult for him to wait until later to help her take this dress off. Was she interested in some fun in the store? Oh, Finley, you be into that. Holler at my some self if you'll break up. 
Rosalie and Finley enjoyed their first public woohoo experience very much. It was invigorating in every way. Rosalie felt more than ready to hit the dance floor, which was flooded with ghosts. Let's just hope Joseph doesn't stop by. Though it wasn't necessarily the scene for romantic slow dancing, Finley obliged. He wanted to hold his woman as tight as possible and tell her what was on his mind. He was so incredibly happy Rosalie accepted his marriage proposal. He spoke about it with his mom Brandy before their Tartosa trip. He was a nervous wreck, worried that he was going to scare her off with proposing just after high school. But he listened to his mother's advice to follow his heart. And he was happy he did because she accepted they're getting married. He noticed neither of them have spoken much about it, probably because it was so sudden for her. He completely understood. But now, since she's been able to soak it in for a while, he wanted to get to planning. Planning? Oh god, it's happening. Originally, Finley thought it would be a good idea to get married after college. But the only reason why he believed that to begin with was because of what society thinks about marrying young, how it's irresponsible and dumb, how it's puppy love, and the feelings they share will fizzle out within a couple of years. Yes, he knows divorce rates are higher the younger you marry, but he believes in their love, and he knows Rosalie does too. He wanted to marry Rosalie as soon as possible. He was thinking after their second term is complete. Second term. That's less than to sim weeks away. He just wants to be her husband more than anything. And this would be more convenient for them anyways. They don't have to be apart from each other and live in the dorms. They can get their own place in Gibbs Hills and come home to each other every night. And he knows how men's brains work. How they have no respect for single women who say no to their advances. Once she tells them she's married, they'll be more likely to leave her alone. She said it herself in the bathroom just a few minutes prior. He knows how guys like to hit on her. Rosalie did not know what to say. Part of her thought it was sweet. Part of her wanted to throw up. She needed a distraction. Right now, real bad, or Finley's converse and her Louboutins were done for. Luckily, she got the distraction she needed, being surprised with a hug by Maximilian Fontaine. Holy shit, what was he doing all the way out here in San Michuno? And Finley was just wondering who the fuck did this man think he was laughing at his fiance's jokes. Rosalie helped jog Finley's memory. Maximilian hosted the Halloween party they went to in high school. You know, the one where Finley beat the living shit out of Jaquan Scruggs. Ah yes, Finley remembered that D-bag Maximilian now, the college frat guy that liked to hang around teenagers. But for Rosalie's sake, he stayed respectful. Respectfully watching what he was doing. Finley is so jealous LMAO. The side eye is insane. Maximilian said he was just finishing up with his economics degree at Brightchester. Of course he's an equal major. Finley thought to himself. Rosalie told him she was also attending Brightchester now. Pursuing a distinguished history degree. Though Maximilian was trying to joke around with Finley. He wasn't budging. Especially since he was interrupting a very important conversation. He was having with his fiance. He could tell he wasn't wanted here by him, so he said his goodbyes to them and headed to catch the next train to Brightchester. Perhaps they'll bump into each other on campus. And of course, jealous Finley couldn't help but assert his dominance over Maximilian by giving Rosalie a big kiss on the dance floor. Rosalie had a lovely time with her man. You know, until he brought up the marrying in two weeks thing. What the hell was she gonna do? Luckily, her tired eyes got her out of that conversation. Finley dropping her off at her dorm. He told her to get her rest. And that they can talk about it more the next time they see each other. Thank goodness. Because she literally didn't know what on earth to do. It was all happening so fast. She wasn't ready for this. It's almost like her dorm mate, Kimberly Petty, had read her mind. She had just the remedy Rosa needed to get her mind off her fiancé, an invite to attend her first ever college party. 